Just this month, we've witnessed Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos become the first tourists to reach space on their own rocket companies. Later this year, Elon Musk's SpaceX has even bigger plans for space tourism. SpaceX's Falcon 9 is an orbital rocket that has already taken astronauts to the International Space Station. It's scheduled to launch on September 15th with four private citizens. And in October, Falcon 9 is set to launch Tom Cruise and a small film crew to the ISS to film the first movie from space. And then there's Japanese billionaire Yusaku Meizawa's Dear Moon project, which is set to take 10 to 12 private passengers around the moon on SpaceX's Starship. It's fair to say the new activity in space is exciting, but for the longest time, the idea that a civilian could experience space travel remained frustratingly out of reach. Why? It was just too expensive. Really, really expensive. The 1969 Saturn V rocket that launched astronauts to the moon cost a staggering $30,000 per kilogram launched into low Earth orbit, and its successor Space Shuttle, intended to make spaceflight cheaper, ended up costing over twice as much. In the decades since, space access remained exorbitant, reserved only for governments with billions of dollars to spend. Gradually, the cost of space declined. In 2008, a new startup called SpaceX made a fourth attempt at launching their Falcon 1, set to be the first orbital private liquid-fueled rocket. With no money left for a fifth attempt, this was the last chance to succeed. And succeed it did, securing the future of the company. In fact, it was just the beginning of a long line of innovations that have transformed the cost of spaceflight. At $2,350 per kilo, Falcon Heavy achieved the cheapest launch cost in history, 10 times cheaper than Saturn V, and their next generation rocket, Starship, is set to blow that out of the water. Improving space travel while making it less expensive and more accessible is a challenge. Meeting this goal takes an engineering approach that's not been seen in space before and it requires simplifying some of the most complicated machines ever built. So, what is simplicity and why is it so important to SpaceX? How do you remove complexity to produce the cheapest rockets ever made? What techniques does SpaceX utilize to engineer simplicity? The last video showed how SpaceX uses an agile iterative model to rapidly prototype and test subsequently more representative versions that converge on the final design. This model discovers and resolves design issues early in development. It enables more capable rockets with much faster development times, whilst substantially decreasing the cost of production. From clever business strategies to new rocket capabilities which lower cost and increase the size of the launch market beyond anything we've seen. These innovations are making it cheaper and simpler to access space. But this video will focus on their intelligent engineering approach and how simplicity is used to slash the cost of rocketry. Simplicity in engineering isn't a new concept. KISS, aka Keep It Simple Stupid, is a design philosophy the US Navy developed in the 1960s. The takeaway is obvious, don't overcomplicate things. The more work involved, the more complexity increases. Adding more parts means more design work, manufacturing time and material to source. It increases failures during operation and assembly, whilst increasing the risk of malfunction through part interactions. You might expect a focus on simplicity is widely adopted across engineering, especially when developing large, high-performance vehicles like rockets. Yet part of the reason spaceflight is so expensive and regularly falls behind schedule is the issue of overcomplication. Traditional aerospace has often prioritized risk management. This was not helped by the cost plus contracts that used to be a staple of the launch industry. Those contracts both guaranteed the profit of manufacturers, irrespective of how much project costs increased, and removed the incentive to keep design simple, resulting in significantly over-engineered rockets. SpaceX's simplification can be seen in every aspect of their vehicle design, manufacturing, launch procedures, and development process. For example, when designing their rockets, SpaceX reduces complexity by removing unnecessary parts, commonizing similar parts, and utilizing modularity wherever possible. 
This happens at all scales, from commonizing an array of small fixings to building modularity into large-scale engine assemblies. While it's common for a rocket to feature two different types of engines, all of Falcon Heavy's 27 engines are Merlins. Like Falcon 9, the nozzle on the upper stage Merlin is longer to optimize for a higher specific impulse during vacuum flight. But while it looks like a larger engine, it's largely common with the sea level variant. While simplicity in engineering seems intuitive, applying it can be complex. This can be seen in how SpaceX chooses their rocket materials. The last video showed how SpaceX's Starship abandoned carbon fiber for stainless steel construction. This made it easier to rapid prototype and manufacture, whilst greatly reducing material costs. It's quite easy to see how this material switch improved simplicity. However, it's not always this straightforward. Starship has also switched fuel from Falcon's rocket-grade kerosene to methane. However, this is extremely challenging and required development of the new Raptor engine, an engine with a full-flow stage combustion cycle featuring two intricate turbo pumps. This greatly increases the engine complexity over Merlin. So why would SpaceX do this? What increases complexity in one area may decrease it in others. Developing Raptor may be an engineering challenge, but switching to methane makes the procurement and refinement of fuel much cheaper and easier than kerosene. So what's the impact on overall complexity? Designing Raptor was no small task, but as Elon Musk said about Starship development, the hardest problem by far is building the production system of something this big. Manufacturing is 10 times harder than design. Anything that makes production easier typically lowers overall complexity. So if harder design work up front means easier manufacturing later, then this is usually the optimal path towards improving net simplicity. Of course, a more complex Raptor engine itself can result in its own manufacturing challenges. However, a reusable rocket like Starship is manufactured once and flown many times. Therefore, the production demand of fuel is much greater than that of the rocket. Focusing on simplifying fuel production has had the biggest impact on complexity. This is especially true for a vehicle like Starship that needs to return from Mars, where fuel production is especially difficult. For SpaceX, part of their philosophy is not to redesign a new solution when one already exists. In other words, don't reinvent the wheel. They utilize standardized off-the-shelf parts as much as possible and even use design solutions from other fields. Rather than creating new harnesses for securing astronauts, they found that simply buying race car harnesses did the job. And instead of developing new hatch handles for $1,500, they used door latches from bathroom stalls for a fraction of the cost. Repurposing is not restricted to parts. SpaceX applies this for infrastructure too, having recently bought two oil platforms for $3.5 million each. Renamed after Mars's moons Phobos and Demios, they've been converted into offshore launch and landing platforms for the new Starship, at a fraction of the cost of what it would have been to develop their own. Designing for simplicity isn't just about part selection and optimization, it's about the whole vehicle development process. Compared to today's versions, the first Falcon 9 that launched in 2010 was very different. It followed the minimum marketable product concept associated with agile development. This meant starting with the simplest product possible, having only essential features. Unlike today's rocket, the first Falcon 9 couldn't reuse the first stage booster and could only launch less than half of the payload of the current version in expendable configuration. This simplified Falcon 9 could not achieve all emissions it can today, but it was designed to have enough functionality to deliver its early missions. The current Falcon's deep cryogenic fueling and booster reuse function makes it far more capable. However, from a design perspective, it's much more complicated. If SpaceX tried to develop and launch the modern Falcon from the very beginning, they would have failed. Developing rockets is extremely difficult. To prevent getting stuck in development hell, it's essential to eliminate as much complexity as possible. Once the simplest version of the rocket can meet requirements, capability and complexity can be added iteratively to achieve the requirements of a broader customer base. 
This approach enabled SpaceX to develop and launch Falcon 9 in just five years. Astonishing progress by space industry standards. What if we could remove complexity entirely? As Elon Musk explained, what are the mistakes that smart engineers make? One of the biggest traps for smart engineers is optimizing a thing that shouldn't exist. The best part is no part. The best process is no process. Removal of process is based on the agile value that individuals and interactions are favored over processes and tools, or competence trumps process. It's difficult to strike a balance when small errors can lead to critical failures, though too much emphasis on process control can introduce its own failure risks through spiraling complexity and by delaying testing, which is perhaps the most valuable risk mitigation tool. SpaceX has strived to avoid the death by process they saw at NASA and aims to eliminate as many processes as possible. They build the simplest version and repeatedly test it, only developing processes further when necessary. But how can you delete a process without increasing risk? SpaceX wanted to simplify their launch processes to reduce the turnaround between launches. The launch process involves having someone on hand to manually trigger a controlled explosion if a rocket goes off track and poses danger. To delete this process, SpaceX developed an onboard flight termination system that could automatically detect anomalies and trigger termination faster than a human. This is removal of process through design and is one of the many ways SpaceX have managed to streamline their launch procedure such that they have the fastest turnaround and launch cadence in history. As we've seen, simplicity is the key to SpaceX's success. And I've been looking at ways to integrate this concept into my own life. And I believe a great way to do this is through the video sponsor, Skillshare. With the class I've been taking, Simple Productivity, How to Accomplish More with Less, by Greg McKeown, author of the New York Times bestseller, Essentialism. This class helps you discover how to apply essentialism in your own life. Essentialism isn't about optimizing productivity through efficiency, rather developing a routine for continually identifying what really matters to you, so you can focus on doing more of the right things and eliminate the non-essential. It's a similar concept to what we just saw with SpaceX, whereby they only work on what's absolutely necessary and don't fall into the trap of trying to optimize things that shouldn't exist. It's great for discovering how to apply principles like simplicity to a personal setting, demonstrating valuable tools and concepts in a concise way. And you can find this class and many more like it on Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community built around learning and improving. It's a place to deep dive into the topics that are important to you, develop skills you think might be helpful, or even just quickly explore countless new topics to see if they're right for you. Whether it's discovering how you can apply Agile to projects like SpaceX have, or getting creative exploring video production, Skillshare has classes on a broad range of topics, from entrepreneurship and web development to graphic design and photography. Skillshare is curated so that you can quickly find out what you want, and new premium classes are being added all the time. I'm a big advocate for online learning. It's a core part of how I learn about technologies. I personally find the classes on Skillshare to be an ideal balance of concise information content whilst being easy to follow. There's no ads and the classes follow a coherent structure of short videos that you can access when you want. If you want to further your learning journey and support the channel, then Skillshare is a great place to do that. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. What really stands out about SpaceX's engineering is its vertical integration. For a physical product, supply chain integration refers to the structure of how material and component inputs are supplied to build the final product. Vertical integration means that much of these inputs are developed and built within the company rather than from external suppliers. The number of advanced technologies required for rocket development is tremendous. Traditional rocket development involves a vast supply chain and design components are often outsourced to third-party suppliers. Because internal production still requires an external supply chain to support it, but also requires hiring staff to research, develop and manufacture. Outsourcing typically makes the development process easier. 
This seems to violate SpaceX's simplicity principle, because if it's easier to outsource, why not just do it? Because it's all about net complexity. The process of working with suppliers has an overhead. Your design is restricted to what they can build and deliver, whilst limiting your ability to quickly modify and update designs. These trade-offs may seem like a small price to pay, but compounded across many suppliers, it adds constraints and increases the complexity of the design process. In contrast, in-house development can quickly reprioritize, reorganize, and adapt to development changes. This allows you to build parts to the exact specifications and quantities exactly when you need them, eliminating many challenges and bottlenecks, resulting in a much simpler development process. Despite the initial difficulty of setting up vertical integration, the cost savings can be enormous. Unlike NASA, who outsourced many of Space Shuttle's most expensive components, SpaceX builds nearly all their major components, from engines and boosters to fairings and avionics. In fact, whether measured by cost, volume, or mass, 70% of Falcon 9 is built directly by SpaceX. All these parts are produced at scale, with high levels of automation, allowing the design to keep up with the frantic rate of production. While this is extreme by traditional space industry standards, it still leaves 30% of the rocket production to external suppliers. How does SpaceX decide when they should purchase a component or build it themselves? As we'll see, it's a misconception that SpaceX wants to vertically integrate everything. In fact, SpaceX looks for two opportunities when outsourcing, and if one of them is met, they won't hesitate to purchase externally. The first case is identifying if the required part can be a commodity or an off-the-shelf item. This includes raw materials like aluminium or steel, bolts and screws, electronic components, or as we saw, bathroom latches and racing harnesses. These items are typically used in many industries, mass-produced by multiple manufacturers and can be rapidly sourced globally. This makes it cheap and easy to procure large quantities whilst removing the difficulty of design and manufacturing. As such, SpaceX wants as many of these parts on their rockets as possible. Unfortunately, Orbital Rocket Booster is not a part you typically find in a hardware catalogue. Complex parts like these would traditionally be outsourced to aerospace suppliers, but for SpaceX, this is not acceptable. As SpaceX's first employee, Tom Muller recalls, when asking a vendor for an estimate on a particular engine valve, they came back requesting like a year and a half in development and hundreds of thousands of dollars, just way out of whack. And we're like, no, we need it by this summer for much, much less money. They go, good luck with that, and kind of smirked and left. Muller's people made the valve themselves, and by summer, they'd qualified it to use with cryogenic propellants. That vendor, they iced us for a couple of months, and then they called us back. Hey, we're willing to do that valve. You guys want to talk about it? And we're like, no, we're done. He goes, what do you mean you're done? We qualified it, we're done. And there was just this silence at the end of the line. They were in shock. That scenario has repeated to the point where Muller says, we passionately avoid space vendors. Most suppliers aren't set up for the agility nor cost that SpaceX demands, especially within the aerospace industry. They would much rather vertically integrate than use these suppliers. That said, SpaceX would still prefer to outsource if they can, even if it means using an unconventional supplier. This is why some large-scale assemblies, like the Falcon 9 landing legs, are built by the motorsports team All-American Racers. Contrary to popular belief, SpaceX isn't obsessed with vertical integration. Instead, it's a result of their obsessive focus on simplicity. Whenever outsourcing a solution improves net simplicity, SpaceX will do it. Falcon vertically integrating 70% of its supply chain is a reflection that the launch market doesn't have a commoditized supply base yet, and that there are very few suppliers who can deliver lower net complexity than SpaceX can. As we've seen, SpaceX's obsession with engineering simplicity is allowing them to build the cheapest rockets in history, and it's already opening up the frontiers of space. But this is only part of the story how SpaceX has made spaceflight cheaper. 
They're developing capabilities never seen before and utilizing them in unique ways to change the way business is conducted in space. The launch market is rapidly reshaping, but the biggest changes are yet to come. How does SpaceX and their new launch vehicle fit into this picture? What else are they doing to bring down the cost of rocketry? Just how cheap can access to space get? Let's find out.